Okay, we're back. I'm just gonna load up the dashboard for myself to see see if I can finally see Twi chat again. But the frames are looking better, so I've at least dealt with that issue. I'll probably drop a few while it loads the channel and I have to hear my voice again, but that's the least okay, of my we're back. I'm just gonna... Nice. Okay. And I can see the chat room, so sorry for the hiatus, but everything is working the way I was hoping it would. Or, well, it's saying I'm offline, but I suspect that'll be dealt with in a couple minutes. If you're just joining, uh, this is my very first time playing Dust Force. Don't expect speedruns or anything along these lines because I am garbage at this game. It's fun though. <laughs> Oops, what's going on here? Okay, I didn't intend to finish the level like that, but that's fine. We've made progress. As my engineering friend says, C's get degrees. And looks like chat is down for me again, so... Sorry, I will definitely say when that's back up. It was up for a minute and then it went away. But I'm not dropping frames. Uh. <clears throat> so let's see if I can make a somewhat salient point on uh, the international, which is what I was originally trying to talk about. The, um, I mean, so you've got five months now uh, if the invitations are going out in May. Obviously, as far as who gets the invite, that's going to be determined over the next few months. Um, not not just the five. Like obviously, that's a that's something that's probably already been is probably already well underway. I think it's safe to say that Secret is definitely a team getting an invite because it is filled with veteran players, um, and it is clearly a team that is designed to win the international at all costs. But other than that. You know, people are having some troubles finding uh, sort of their representatives for the Western scene. Um, now, I think some people could argue this was the state of the Asian teams in TI4, although it always seems like there's... Like, to me, it seems like you can't really count, count out the Chinese teams. I really don't think... I mean, I, I didn't follow TI3 that closely. I was still when I was getting into the game. But I think the surprise seem to me at least to be that you know these teams that should have done strong didn't wind up doing as well as what people would have normally expected so um, as opposed to now where it's sort of like other than secret where's the really strong western teams um, now you know for what you know for whatever my opinion counts um, again I think VP polar is very it's very good it's very interesting um and i think people are maybe not giving them their due um now obviously they lost a secret in the xmg captain's draft invitational but i think a lot of people were sort of expecting um secret to win that so uh, a good second place uh, i think is is perfectly reasonable for a team like vp polar but i'm not dropping frames Yeah, so it looks like Twitch chat is just completely boned for me, which really sucks because I like um, I like chatting with you. If you have anything uh, deeply important or any questions that you wanted while I'm dealing with this um, rather frustrating um, chat situation, uh, feel free to send just a regular Twitch message. I'll I'll commit to at least reading those on the break. And then if I start getting a few email notifications, I'll see if there's a convenient point for me to, to go through. 
appreciate you guys hanging hanging out for such a long and delay ridden cast though Jesus Christ that had the opportunity to be cool but so anyways I think the, I guess the one thing I was trying to say about Secret was that I think it's actually important to have a team like that show up in a scene. Because if you think about it, it's not like um, other regions or other players are going to put in less effort because they feel their opponents are weaker. Um, you, I mean, actually, you can sort of see what happened with DK uh, last year. Everybody, you know, after their really dominant show at Star Ladder, you know, they were the team to beat. Um, and I mean, even newbie, if you think about it, they were a team of superstars, right? Actually, apparently it's a fairly wealthy Chinese business owner um, bought a Dota team for his son, like it was a birthday present, so it's hell of a birthday present, but it, they obviously did well, right? They got results. I don't think you can do better than win the International Four. Um, so the big thing, like, basically in this environment, you've got a really dominant, really exciting team and the consequence of that is it shakes, up, it shakes up the region that they're in and everybody's just, they have to get better basically. Uh, I think that's what's happened with Secret and I mean personally I hope that's what happens with EG. I think their pickup of AUI, uh, AUI 2000 is a really interesting one. I think they can do, I think they can do really well with them. Um, but I think the disappointment that people are feeling about that team at the moment is I think what they're expecting are effectively instantaneous results. And I definitely think, especially when you have a 15-year-old who has never done a, a LAN before, I think, you know, I think it's unreasonable to expect them to be doing the results of, you know, sort of the favorites to make it to the TI finals that they were last year. Um, but I think, like, if you want, as far as I'm concerned, if you want a history that's shown that they're willing to uh, grow and nurture talent, I actually am having a hard time thinking of of an alt, you know, of a, a rival to EG. Like, they really seem to be a team, and I mean, this might just be the influence of fear on its own. They definitely seem to be a team that is uh, dedicated towards you know bringing up new talent and and doing well with it, right? Like, obviously, Arteezy on Secret now, but sort of made his, it seems to me, made his career at EG. Alright, uh, we've gone through two levels, so let me just take a second to open up this IRC line. This is actually a neat fact. If you are a streamer, um, you can access your chat room through a regular IRC client. They have a step-by-step -step guide online, but it's uh, it's not trivial, so it just takes me a quick minute to sort this out. Basically, the way that they uh, make this work is you've got, uh, the server name is irc.twitch.tv. They give you the, you know, they basically give you the port and everything like that, but your password is generated through their API. And finding the password is 
Find, actually finding the password is the tricky part. The good news is I keep getting Dust Force uh, cards in my account, even if I'm idling in the menu. Well, good news for me, not so much for you. While the site's loading, I'll at least get another level in. I suck. Good lord. I don't seem to be jumping. Oh, that's why. Hmm. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, it's better than the last couple of runs. Jesus Christ. All right. Nothing glamorous about how this is getting solved, but it's working, so that's embarrassing. This is definitely a trickier level than any of those I've encountered. I think the most frustrating thing about this is I keep uh, making the same mistake again. I kind of know, I have a very clear idea of what I want to accomplish uh, in the game, but I'm not, I'm not implementing it. Alright, well, I'll just abandon this and... Ah. I suppose at least I stopped talking about Dota. Actually, on that note, um, I think rather than just fumble with chat, uh, I'll maybe like keep trying. I'll try like one small component in between levels, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put the thing on pause again, just because I think it's at this point the technical problems are becoming the majority of the broadcast. Oh my god, it's finally working! Hi Twitch chat, thank you for hanging out. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, I was a little worried that the technical stuff was becoming the majority of the broadcast, where I think there are interesting, more interesting things to talk about. Although I think the only coherent point I've ever made uh, tonight has been about Gods Will Be Watching. I think the earlier assessment here that this was a little bit like Meat Boy is a fair one. Uh, it's not to suggest that it's a clone, I mean I think this is very much its own game, but... I noticed the struggle. I think well. Th I think the thing about Meat Boy for me is that I, I know what I'm supposed to do, and I, I do it poorly. Um, this game, I sort of feel like I'm struggling with the controls a little bit. 
Although the one thing I'll say for this one, uh, as much as I like Meat Boy, this one has a really nice feature in you can in that you sort of set up some really interesting combos. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to implement them, but I sort of, especially in the tutorial missions, I kind of see how you can you can do cool stuff in this. So it'd be really interesting to see somebody who's good at this game uh, stream it, just because I think they can they can probably do some pretty impressive stuff. Unlike that. <laughs> Um, I'll also maybe say too, so I was, you know, yam yammering on about Dota and failing to make any kind of a point, but uh, I did get some news from my co-caster, Nick. Uh, I think we're going to be doing at least one game. That janitor just gave up on life. Uh, looks like we are going to be doing at least one game on at 7 o'clock. So uh, what I normally do for that is I will host his channel here, so... If you are interested in that, you can stop by, uh, or his site is just uh, Nick the Peasant. You can find that in my list of people who I follow. Uh, I think I said this before. I know the last time I casted with Nick, I was a little disappointed that I wasn't. Um, I just wasn't as active in the cast. I think I sort of deferred to him a little too much. I mean, he's a very good caster. He's somebody who could handle things on his own. 